Hello and welcome to Moment of Truth on Labour Social. I'm Graeme Hughes. Today I want to talk a little bit about the shocking lack of support for Boris Johnson from amongst Tory MPs. I spent a good chunk of yesterday looking for Tory sycophants who are actually backing Boris Johnson, his lies and his contempt for Parliament. It's slim pickings. Brandon Clark Smith, the MP for Bassett Law, posted a tweet just 47 minutes after the 30,000 uh, word report was published saying, <clears throat> I am appalled at what I have read about and the spiteful, vindictive and overreaching conclusions of the report. I won't be supporting the recommendations and will be speaking against them both publicly and in the House on Monday. I'm backing fairness and justice, not kangaroo courts. Along with a photograph of Johnson with the slogan, I'm backing Boris, and imploring others to share the image. The image was retweeted with no further comment by MPs Marco Longhi and Andrea Jenkins, while Jacob Rees-Mogg quote tweeted the image, adding, when Parliament stands upon its dignity, it often ends up looking foolish. What? The Privileges Committee report is a case in point. All right, mate. Uh, Justin Tomlinson, MP, posted a pic of Dominic Grieve, adding, those defeated by Boris at the ballot box are rejoicing. Two election winners, Cameron and Boris, cast aside. Brave. Yeah, I've got no idea what that means either. Of course, swivel-eyed Johnson fangirl Nadine Doris wasn't having any of it. This report has overreached and revealed its true predetermined intentions. It's quite bizarre. Harmon declared her position before it began. Jenkins, the most senior MP on the committee, attended an actual, in capital letters, party. Any Conservative MP who would vote for this report is fundamentally not a Conservative and will be held to account by members and the public. Deselections may follow. It's serious. MPs will now have to show this committee what real justice looks like and how it's done. This is Nadine Doris who said she was resigning with immediate effect over a week ago and still hasn't resigned. Meanwhile, Matt Vickers MP tweeted about there being questions around the makeup of the panel, four of whom were Tory MPs. Simon Clark MP was amazed by the harshness of the report, calling it vindictive. Paul Bristow MP said it went way too far. Someone calling themselves Sir James Dudridge KCMG MP wrote, why not go the full way? Put Boris in the stocks and provide rotten fruit to throw rotten food at him. Moving him around the marginals so the country could, could share in the humiliation. Uh, history will hold Boris in high regard than this committee. I'm sorry, I'm trying to read this, but it's absolute gibberish. Um, I thank him for his service. I think that last sentence was the only one that actually made sense. Do know if that's a parody account like Sir Michael Take. It, it might be. I, I, I have no idea. Uh, Leah Nicky MP said, Boris Johnson has been treated appallingly throughout this whole process. Many others advised and assured him. They knowingly broke the rules and lied. Knowing lied about it. I think these Tory MPs really need a few lessons in you know, grammar, spelling. Uh, yet none of them have been disciplined or lost their jobs. By the way, they, they didn't lie on the record to, to Parliament while they were Prime Minister. What's the real problem here? Esther McVeigh reckons demands calling for Boris to be denied a former MP's pass for Parliament are absolutely absurd and utterly unnecessary. Meanwhile, Sir Jake Berry MP soiled himself on national telly this morning saying this. So why do you think the conclusions were wrong? Well, I spent, I've sort of kept my... Um... I've sort of kept my powder dry in relation to the report. I've taken the slightly old-fashioned approach of saying, well, I'll read it before I comment on it. <laughs> I spent a long time last night reading it. To me, there's a few things. I, I, you know, it's a revisionist approach to what happened two years ago. People have gone back in time and tried to put themselves in the mind of 
Boris Johnson and say what did he think or what did he feel at the time these events were. It seems to me that actually that is a wrong thing to do. You can, everyone's got 2020 hindsight, but you can't go back and change people's minds two years ago or know what they felt. So I think in terms of the, those conclusions that they are probably wrong, it isn't a way any normal court proceeding would work. The second thing is of the five uh, findings against the former Prime Minister Boris Johnson, four of them, four of those five relate to the worst crime that he could possibly commit, that of not, in, not agreeing with the committee. Oh, my God. Right, look, I can't let you go without seeing at least a clip of Brendan Clark Smith's attempts to defend Johnson on Newsnight last night. Here he is. Those Conservative colleagues that vote for this report on Monday assuming they turn up, should they face deselection, as Nadine Doris has suggested? Well, it's a free vote, and I, I think it should stay a free vote. It's a House matter, it's sure. not a party political matter. Should they matter. face deselection in their constituencies? No, no, no. I mean, I think it's for individual constituencies to speak to their members of Parliament about how they feel, about what promises they've made, and about what they think is reasonable and with their own consciences. So I would, I would never go as far as saying that, no. But what I... I would say is that I think they should look at it, I think they should make their own decision on it, and certainly I would urge them to vote against this because I do think it has gone too far. I think it is spiteful and vindictive. Taking his parliamentary pass away from him as a former prime minister is quite unprecedented. Yeah, because he was a prime minister and he misled the House and the country. That's why they're suggesting a suspension of 90 days and removing the pass. It's all the more serious, the committee said because he was the Prime Minister. But, of course, most of this is for the criticism of the committee. Margaret Ferrier, of course, only had 30 days suspension. Uh, this is the, I think it's the this second the biggest Minister. one they've ever issued. Yeah, this was the Prime Minister of the country lying to the country on multiple occasions. They just don't get it, do they? But really, that's been it. A dozen Tory MPs out of over 350. And most of those who did try to defend the glob of foul deformity that is Boris Johnson complained about the committee and the harshness of the punishment. They didn't say he was innocent. Notably, Vishy Sunak was nowhere to be seen. He disappeared for the day, made no comment, and is presumably still hiding under his desk somewhere. One of his predecessors as Prime Minister, the guy who was the leader of the party when Sunak was Chancellor, misled the House. That's a huge charge to lay against any MP, never mind someone who's the actual Prime Minister at the time he committed those offences. The obvious conclusion to draw from this is that the vast majority of the Tory party is, like the country as a whole, well and truly sick of Boris Johnson. But what about the dirty Johnson loyalists who suggest they would vote against this report on Monday? Well, imagine their sense of indignity after Boris Johnson himself said today that they should vote to pass the bill, thereby making them look like absolute idiots on the political stage. Not that they need much help in doing that. They've stuck their necks out for Boris Johnson, and he's, respond he's responded by personally manning the guillotine. Suckers!